These days, I'm just doing philately and international mail order fraud. And, and it leads me down dozens of avenues. And, and basically today, I'm going to show you um, three serious covers, okay, with a lot of peripheral stuff. And this is on the use of the U.S. Parcel Post postage due stamps on mail addressed to Professor A. Victor Segno at the Segno Success Club and American Institute of Mentalism in L.A. The picture below is Professor Segno sending success waves for profit. <laughs> this was his scam. Okay, Indeed. twice a day for $10 a year, $10 is about $200 in today's purchasing power. This is 1910. He would send out success waves to his clients and their lives would improve in the areas of love, hope, peace, wealth, health, ambition, happiness, influence, and success, all for $10. And by 1903, he had 12,000 international members of the success club. That's pretty well confirmed. And by 1911, there are indications that he had 70,000 members uh, in his success club. So he was quite successful in, uh, in his scam. What I'm gonna talk about or show you is three covers uh, with these US parcel post postage due stamps on them that are addressed to Professor Segno's scam. And uh, I should note uh, these envelopes are typical pre-addressed envelopes that Segno sent to clients uh, as part of his information package. And, and they could simply put the appropriate stamps, either, either the regular postage or uh, uh, registered postage. Uh, and you will note the address is the American Institute of Mentalism, Inspiration Point, Echo Park, Station E. That was his local post office that he dealt out of in Los Angeles. So what we have here is an unpaid cover from Buenos Aires, Argentina on June 12th, 1913. It's properly hand stamped T for due, you see it at the top center, with a manuscript 50 centimes due. Uh, that's the UPU currency, 50 centimes, uh, and that's the international rate. When it arrived in New York, it got the proper due 10 cents uh, binocular uh, do hand stamp that they used uh, among the, the uh, hand stamps they used in, in uh, New York on arrival. And then when it got out to LA, they put uh, the station E post office put the 10 cent parcel post postage due uh, uh, on arrival. Uh, and that stamp is correctly canceled with a Los Angeles Cal E uh, uh, double ellipse uh, uh, cancellation for arrival. It was, uh, uh, and that stamp, it, it's just tied. If you look carefully, I'll show you a better slide in a second. And this is from the collection of uh, Wade Sadi. Some of you uh, uh, may know Wade, uh, who is, was president of the Collectors Club, uh, the American Philatelic Society, and New York 2016. So he's a very famous philatelist. And here's a close up of, uh, of that cover. And you can see in the cancellation, um, uh, you can see the, the, the CAL, C-A-L, uh, and just above CAL, if you look very carefully, you can see in the, in the center, the E for station E. So this letter came out of sta mm -hmm. station E, and just at the bottom, it very nicely ties the parcel post postage due stamp. Is there any reason why the postage due stamp used on that first cover was a parcel post postage due? But I think these parcel post postage due stamps and the parcel post stamps themselves uh, were abandoned. It, it, it didn't work out well for the post office. So they just said, use them for regular mail. Just a little background on, on Professor Segno. This is his home base uh, at Echo Park in LA. Uh, the first building is the American Institute of Mentalism where he had the Segno Success Club. It's at Inspiration Point, which is not too far from Dodger, Dodger Stadium today. Uh, and the building up the block is the Segnogram Publishing Company, that where he did all of his publishing, his books, his pamphlets, 
the 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 regular handouts he gave to members and potential members. And also, it's interesting to note he did contract publishing. He published text texts for the LA school system. Uh, most interestingly, uh, as a way way to make money. This piece is uh, is one of the outgoing information packages. The rate was one cent for two ounces. You see a nice use of the Pan Pacific issue of the U.S. And that station E cancel. Now you can see it a little better. It figures in a little bit in another cover I'm going to show you. You see it says Los Angeles across the top, Cal at the bottom, and uh, right in the center E for station E. That 703 North Belmont Avenue is one of Segno's addresses. The other one was 701. Sometimes you see you see both. So this is definitely Segno, Segno material. Here's a, a second use of those parcel post postage due stamps. It's an underpaid letter from Sydney, New South Wales, at an attempted one penny rate uh, on January 6, 1913, same, same year as, as Saudi's cover. This was struck, you can see the shield uh, right by the stamp, NSW for New South Wales, T for due, and 30 for that it's due 30 centimes in UPU currency. The rate from uh, the British rate was two and a half pence. So it's one and a half pence due, which comes out to three pence and comes out to 30 centimes. When it got to New York, it got, a, 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 again, another standard U.S. charge to collect six cents uh, uh, on arrival for the amount due in the U.S. And then along the route, someplace, the one and five cent parcel post postage due stamps were added for due and canceled with a blue crayon. This cover came out of the uh, uh, APS expert uh, uh, database. It was sent in for a certificate. Uh, but they could not issue a certificate for this cover because they couldn't tell where or when the due stamps were added, okay? So the, the APS passed on the cover. And you can see it's it's almost addressed to Professor Segno. They've got uh, S-E-G and they left out the N, they got the O, Inspiration Point, Echo Park. So it's definitely a Segno, Segno cover. And you can see the parcel post postage due stamps uh, the bottom one is is nicely tied by that uh, blue crayon uh, line, uh, but but you can't be certain uh, uh, how this how these stamps got on the uh, got on the envelope. It could have been added much later. From my own collection now, I have this example where where the do do stamps are often canceled with blue crayons at Station E. Okay, here's a letter to Professor Segno posted at the little village of Dudua, Gold Coast on April 29th, 1913, same year. It was posted at, at the hay penny printed matter rate in lieu of the two and a half penny UPU rate. Printed matter should have been sent on sealed. Uh, this letter was probably sealed, which invalidated the printed matter rate. But that wasn't noticed at Dudua uh, so it went into the mails, but it was caught in New York on arrival and properly marked uh, uh, eight cents due because it was two pence short, thus four pence uh, due equivalent to eight pence. And you'll notice that the postage due stamps, these are the regular postage due stamps now, are, are pre-canceled with, with blue crayons. So they were using blue crayons uh, at this time uh, at the uh, Station E post office. Here's another letter. Again, do stamps often canceled with blue crayons. The letter was posted from Bellari, India at a one anna rate in lieu of the proper two and a half anna rate uh, on April 2nd, again, 1913, same year. The shortage was noted in the originating post office of Bellari where the letter was struck with the T at the bottom center for due and then the manuscript 30 for 30 centimes. Uh, because of the one and a half penny deficiency. That's uh, three, one and a half annas. That's three annas due, which was equivalent to six cents due on arrival. Uh, and you see the correct binocular due hand stamp applied in New York. And again, it went to station E 
uh, and you can see the postage due stamps uh, are pre-canceled with blue crayon. So another example of, of the use of blue crayons on postage due stamps uh, in 1913. Uh, at, at Station E en route to the American Institute of Mentalism. And finally, I have a third cover, or I'm, I'm aware of a third cover, from Chile uh, on August 7th, 1913. This is 10 centavos prepaid uh, with a five centavos envelope and five more uh, centavos and stamps on the reverse. I'll show you that in, in a moment. Uh, the correct rate was 20 centavos. So this was correctly marked at uh, the small village of, of origin, T25 for do, T, T for do, and you see the manuscript 25. It got the correct uh, New York collect postage five cents at this point. And then the parcel post postage due was probably applied in LA. And if you carefully look at that stamp, uh, and I'll show you this in a moment, uh, it's pre-canceled Los Angeles Cal E, so it does bear a Station E cancel. So this one is most probably a, a genuine cover, and here's the whole cover in all of its pieces. You can see the front, uh, uh, you can see the back. It's got two, two centavos Columbus stamps and a revenue stamp. That That's kind of a, a, a nicety, an added bonus in Chile. They did use low value revenue stamps when they were short of postage stamps. And if you zoom in uh, at the top left on the on the five cent parcel post postage due, right in the center, you can see you can see an E. OK, so it, it does bear a station E cancel. I processed this image with postmark reveal and you can actually begin to see the Angelus A-N-G-E in the cancel, you can see the E for station E. So uh, this, this is bearing a pre-canceled station E canceled. What's, what's the story on these pre-cancels? I wouldn't have thought that they would want to do it this way. They, they would normally put the... Yeah, the, the, problem, the problem became workload. It was much easier to take a sheet of paper, a sheet of stamps rather, and, and, and with a crayon, just draw lines through them and pre-cancel them or if you had a canceling device, whatever it was, I'm not sure that there were any regulations on what you should do with respect to processing. But in my own collection of, of these fraud covers, I see a lot of pre-canceled uh, postage dues. And it's very common, actually. Um, if, you know, if, you, if you collect them regularly, you'll, you'll see that it was a very common practice for the post offices to pre-cancel them with those those ovals or sometimes with um, traditional pre-canceling devices uh, or the crayon, as, as Ed was mentioning. Well, that, that, again, makes it uh, dubious as to whether anyone will certify the cover as genuine because you could have well, taken... Well, I, I'm, I'm going to get there. So here's another cover from my collection. Uh, and, and this is due stamps pre-canceled at Station E. Okay, this is a cover from Uruguay. Uh, posted at, at five centesimos, uh, hit properly with the T in triangle for do, manuscript uh, 0.30 for 30 centimes, uh, def uh, uh, double deficiency, um, and then got to New York six cents due. And it got three two cents standard postage due uh, stamps. And if you look very carefully at the one at the left, you can see a bit of the double oval uh, station E cancel. You can see the E very clearly uh, at the bottom of that and, and the CA of Cal uh, in a little bit of the Angeles. So these were definitely pre-canceled with the, with the oval uh, station E cancel. And, uh, and, and that's how one clerk processed postage, postage due material. What are the probabilities that these covers are all genuine? They're all from 1913, okay? Cover one, the Saudi cover ten, with the 10 cent stamp. Uh, the, the, the stamp is tied by the station E cancel. I don't think there's any question about that. It's 100% genuine, okay? Uh, I'm, going, I'm willing to go a little more than the APS with the, with the use of the crayon uh, 
uh, uh, cancels, the blue crayon cancels. Uh, we, we do see them on stationary uh, um, uh, process do mail. Uh, so, so that is a, a fact in its favor. Uh, one thing I, I could do, I don't know if I'll ever get there, is do some surface reflectance IR and UV spectroscopy uh, on the uh, uh, blue crayon uh, uh, cancels to see if there was anything that specifically ties uh, a one blue line to station E. Okay, uh, the, I don't know what the blue dyes were and if they were common around the world. You know, it's opening up a whole chemical study. I was a chemist in my day, uh, and I know the people who have the equipment to do this, but I don't know that I'll get there. The third cover, uh, the one with the station E cancel, uh, when, you, when you start putting together all the information, uh, uh, if, if it's a fraudulent cover, when you start putting together all the information, whoever prepared it had to know a lot. Okay, namely that Segno mail uh, was going to station, station E and they had to have available a station E U stamp. So I give that a little higher percent uh, likelihood that it's genuine. I think, it, I think it's above 95%, okay. Uh, so that's, that's where I stand on, on, on those, uh, those three covers. Uh, I've got to acknowledge Wade Soddy for bringing his cover to my attention after he heard me give a lecture on Segno, and that alerted me to the possibilities of these covers. Gary Lowe was, was head of the expertizing group at the APS when I visited and we were discussing Segno, and he went into the database and uh, pulled out the New South Wales cover for my attention. And then I'd like to thank Carlos Vergara I don't know if any of you know Carlos, he's vice president of the Collectors Club of Chicago and one of the foremost collectors of, of postal history and postage stamps of Chile. And, and uh, he's, he's really up on my fraud collection and he brings a lot of things to my attention, including that last cover. And, and once I saw the, the uh, station E uh, cancel on the stamp, I figured oh, I'm gonna buy that one even though it's a premium. Uh, because I, I, I have good, uh, good feelings about it. And of course, I'd like to thank Professor Segno, uh, who, who's created all this nonsense that's gotten me involved in this. And I'd like to show his book, How to Be Happy Though Married, uh, which, which he authored in the early 1900s, and then his book on the law of mentalism. The law of mentalism, these guys were active in all of the major European languages, and the law of mentalism is available in English, uh, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Italian, German. Uh, I have a copy in Romanian. Uh, uh, it's, it's really crazy how far it went. I should note with the How to Be Happy book that Professor Segno divorced his first wife in 1903 and married one of his secretaries at the American Institute of Mentalism. He divorced her in 1911 and married another secretary. And then he departed for Ber to Berlin to establish a branch of the Signo Success Club in Berlin, taking, taking her along. And I just wanted to show you this cover. This is the only recorded letter to the Signo uh, Success Club branch in Berlin. Okay, and it ties back to what I've just showed you, the proper overseas rate from Chile to an overseas destination is 20 centavos, which, which you see. And finally, uh, uh, because of World War I, the Berlin branch of the Segno Success Club failed in 1915. And here's a cut from the LA Times of January 4th, 1915, wonderfully titled, Mars Destroys Success Waves. Money, money scares Victor Segno leaving Berlin and he came back to the United States uh, a failure. Okay, and uh, it ended up his, his second wife ran the American Institute of Mentalism for another 20 years. So, uh, so that's the end of my story today.